It's like I'm living on a cloud Out here just floating around Hi, so we're here in San Francisco. I'm Bonnie Spindler and this is the American Dream. And today we're gonna to talk about just that, the American Dream. So San Francisco is a city where it's normal to be different. And we're gonna talk about all the different ways to live out the American Dream. We are standing in front of the Westerfield Mansion and we're gonna look at the American Dream based on this house and a person. Jimmy Siegel left Pennsylvania at 16 and he landed like a lot of street kids on Haight Street. He started hanging out at the Phoenix, which was a psychedelic store. The owner went out of business. He gave the fixtures and inventory to Jimmy. And today he has distractions. Everyone from Burning Man burners to swing dancers have found what they wanted at distractions. From the time he was a child, he loved the Adams family. And so he vowed to have an American dream house like the Adams family where he could be different. So you'll see inside this house, he's embodied all the different aspects of the different eras of San Francisco. William Westfield was a baker. Once he had achieved a certain amount of wealth, he decided to build this mansion. And it's a Victorian Italianate. He sold it to the Mahoney's and they rebuilt a lot of the city after the 1906 earthquake. From the 30s and 40s, Russian immigrants owned the house and they ran a restaurant and a nightclub there called Dark Eyes. There were so many famous Russian people coming and going from the house that they started calling it the Russian consulate. In the 50s and 60s, African-American jazz players lived in the house. And in the 60s, as this neighborhood went into rack and ruin, hippies took over. The neighborhood has seen so many changes over the years, and yet each group of immigrant, artist, musician, or offbeat person got to find their own American dream, and they did so inside this house. So today we're gonna meet Jimmy Siegel, self-made man that went from street kid to mansion owner here in San Francisco. Let's go meet Jimmy. Hi, hey. Bonnie. Hey, Jimmy. Welcome, come on in. <laughs> Good you. to see you. Good to see you. Thank you so much for doing this. Well, welcome to my very, very special, unique San Francisco home. No kidding. This house was always on my mind. When I was 19 years old, I decided I was going to buy this particular house. And it wasn't for sale at the time. And in 1986, this building came up for sale. And it had always been my dream home and uh, I sold the three buildings I had to purchase this. So this room would have been the- Main front parlor. Yep, and then the next one would be music room? Yes, uh, they, well, it would have been kept closed by these double sliding doors. The back parlor would have been a music room, a bookshelf with books and things, and this is more or less used as the family room. This is a pretty large house. It's 9,800 square feet, five floors, has 28 rooms altogether. Wow. It's a very large Victorian, and it looked like this when I first saw it. It was the closest thing in town to the Adams Family House. Tell me about the wallpaper. Okay, the wallpaper is made by a company called Bradbury & Bradbury in Benicia, California. They drew up plans for me, but then I had to hand draw all the design out on the ceiling. Some of the strips are only one inch wide, and I have to cut rows and rows and rows of strips out, and then it's all decoupaged up on the ceiling. It took about a month to do this. Wow, that is impressive. Um, can we see some of the other rooms? Sure, please. Let's uh, check out the dining room. What a beautiful room. So this is the breakfast room or the, or the dining, dining room? room? The breakfast yeah. room's actually on the other side of the hall. <laughs> okay. So this is the dining room. It has a beautiful built-in buffet that's original to the house. I love this Italian marble. It's yes. so pretty. It was the age of excess and everything was supposed to be polychromed and covered with color. Wow, what a spectacular room. Good grief. Yeah, I have pretty much a 300 degree view of the whole city from up here. It's pretty spectacular. And then 22 feet up, we have a giant pyramid. This ceiling was removed in the 1960s by um, the second commune that lived here, were a group of Satan worshipers and some of the Manson family. So this view 
was spectacular. I mean, between the tower and the view, I don't yeah. think I've ever seen anything I've got like a great that. view of downtown. I used to have a great view of the entire East Bay, but in the 35 years I've lived here, they've built every one of those high rises. I feel like San Francisco is a blessing and I was in the right place at the right time and took advantage of a lot of good opportunities. Yeah, it's an amazing place to be, I have to admit. <laughs> it's done right by me. Yes, me too. <laughs> I love the city. Well, so thank, thank you, you for uh, coming and checking everything out. I appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. It's been a real adventure. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So hopefully you got a little glimpse into the multifaceted American dream of San Francisco. All cultures are welcome here, and it's what makes San Francisco so special. Thank you so much for joining me again for this month's segment of the American Dream, and we'll see you again next month.